All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Committee on Land Use. I am Council Member Rafael Salamanca, Chair of this committee. I want to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of this committee and are present here today. We have Council Members Gibson, Reynoso, Deutsch, King, Kuhl, Levin, Lansman, Gredenchik, Barron, Richards, Chair Adams, and Miller. And we also have uh, Council Member Traeger. First, we have a pre-considered resolution um, that we will hear today. I, uh, I now move to, for an adoption of the pre-considered resolution. You, you have all received authorizing the filing of a land use application for a city map change. The city map change would establish Rikers Island as a public place. In addition to the designation, to the designation public place, the city map would be amended with the use restriction that Rikers Island shall not be used for incarceration of individuals after December 31st of 2026. A vote of aye on this pre-considered resolution is a vote for it to be considered by the full council. Does anyone second this motion? I second the pre-considered resolution. All right, so it is moved and seconded and the pre-considered resolution advanced to the full council. Uh, I will now open up the floor for a debate. Does anyone wish to debate this motion? Um, I recognize Council Member Barry Gredenchik. Thank you. Um, I have a problem with this. Uh, I, I just received this at 1130. Um, I don't know why that we need to do this so quickly. I am on uh, the record as being in favor of closing Rikers Island. Um, I have not had a chance to thoroughly review this, either myself or my staff. Um, and I am concerned, given the history of construction in the city of New York, um, that these jails, as they are proposed, will be finished by the end of 2026. Um, so I uh, have great difficulty here, and I'm going to have to abstain on this. Thank you. Um, any uh, other member wish to debate this? Uh, Council Member King? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for today's conversation. Um, I know today I will be voting no consistently with the thinking of how to understand how do we correct our criminal justice system. I've always said the closure of Rikers Island doesn't fix a criminal justice system that's been overwhelmed and overwhelmed. And, and people of certain ethnicities in the city of New York have been mistreated when it comes to being arrested. Um, so I don't see how closing Rikers corrects the system, even though we have all these reforms that are scheduled to hit, hit and go into effect. I like to see that these reforms actually have a positive impact before we start putting jails in everyone's neighborhoods and seeing how we want to rehabilitate to people before they get into the incarceration system. So I just want to note for the record again, uh, the vote will go for it, but I am a no vote today in regards to anything that has to do with not correcting the criminal justice system, but closing down a building, that's not the problem, but the system, which is the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to recognize uh, Council Member Gibson. Thank you, Chair, and good afternoon, colleagues. And I, too, just want to make a, a quick point. Um, and Chair Salamanca, I appreciate that during this conversation around closing Rikers Island, you have been consistent in ensuring that we also include the closing of the barge. Uh, which has been a temporary boat uh, that has sat in Hunts Point for over 20 years. Um, and so with that same spirit in mind, I want to ensure that whatever resolution this body puts forth, we have to ensure that no administration beyond this current administration ever looks at housing individuals on a boat. Detainees and individuals and New Yorkers should not be housed in any facility that is considered a barge. And I also want to include the neighboring parking lot uh, of which sits next to the barge as well. I think we have to be crystal clear with the matter before us and make sure that as much detail as possible is included in anything that we vote on. It is a declaration of our commitment, of our investment in New Yorkers and making sure that we are really about fundamental criminal justice change and reform. And so I am asking this committee and this council to consider a revision to make sure that we include language that does not allow any administration to ever build another barge, renovate the existing barge, or 
create any bars in the city of New York to house individuals that are detained. Um, and I also, again, include the adjacent parking lot next to the bars. So I would like that to be considered because I think it, we can take nothing for granted. And while we're having this conversation, we have to make sure that we include all parts of criminal justice. And so uh, just as much as Rikers Island is a detention center, so is the Bosch. And I think we should consider that as we move forward. So I thank you for your leadership. And I know you've been extremely uh, passionate about the Bosch and making sure we never forget it. And certainly our Bronx residents remind us all the time. And I want to make sure that we do not forget about the Bosch. So I wanted to put that on record and make sure my colleagues are aware of that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Now I would like to recognize uh, Councilmember Levin. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I want to thank the Speaker uh, and the Chair and Land Use staff for putting together this resolution um, that will allow us to move forward on, um, on initiating the land use action to close Rikers Island ourselves. Um, throughout this conversation, especially over the last few months, uh, New Yorkers, uh, members of the public, have, um, have rightfully asked us, um, we're going through this process, investing all of this capital dollars in building new jails in communities across New York City in the four boroughs. What assurance do we have that it's not just an expansion plan? What assurance do we have that we're not just going to build these new jails and keep Rikers Island open in seven years when we're all out of office? Um, and that's a, that's a legitimate question. That's a legitimate question because up to this point, um, there's been nothing as part of this application that has assured us and the public that Rikers Island will actually close. And that's what this resolution is going to do, is to make sure that after January 1st of 2027, there can be no jail use on Rikers Island. Now, I understand um, Councilmember Gredentrick's point, uh, A, about how, um, how little time we've had to review this, but also about um, construction timelines. Um, this has been authorized as, as uh, being a potential design-build contract um, under the state law. Um, I can attest to uh, the experience that I've had so far in my district of the Kosciuszko Bridge being a design-build project. I know the Tappan Zee or the Mario Cuomo Bridge Design, design build project, which, which did, um, which did uh, move along a process much more quickly. I mean, basically, that, the, the Kosciuszko Bridge got built in around the same timeline as a, a park bathroom um, by, by New York City Parks. That's a fact. Um, uh, and that was a, uh, over a billion dollar project. So, so um, that does enhance uh, the speed at which uh, these constructions can happen. And frankly, we need to be able to set a deadline anyway uh, to ensure that those happen um, with all deliberate haste. And so um, by setting a date firm that um, is in law, codified in law and zoning law, um, that uh, we, we set a clear message to the public that Rikers is going to close. This is not an expansion plan. This is a reduction plan. This is going from the uh, probably over 14,000 bed capacity uh, in the current jail system between the four boroughs and, and Rikers to um, a capacity that's going to be under, and I think well under 4,000 beds. So we need to be um, uh, mindful that that's what we're talking about here. That's what we're talking about here. We're giving the public an assurance that we are going to close Rikers for good. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. We'd like to recognize Council Member Reynoso. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I want to thank uh, Council Member Steve Levin, my colleague from Brooklyn. Uh, the time for justice is always right now. I want to thank uh, the City Council uh, for moving forward with ensuring that we close Rikers. This campaign is a close Rikers campaign since its inception. And that is what we're going to be able to guarantee after this vote, is that Rikers will close. Uh, there's going to be uh, many discussions that we're going to have in the next couple of weeks. But the one that I didn't think we were going to have is whether or not Rikers should be closing by 2026. That has been the bottom line. That has been the, the line we've drawn in the sand. 
Um, I, I believe it's a common denominator in what we're doing here is to close Rikers. The other discussions that we're having, you know, I have no issues with folks going at it, but when it comes to Rikers, it's about shutting it down. This today makes that happen. I'm extremely grateful that we were thoughtful enough to figure out a way to get this done before the vote on the new jails, and I'm grateful to the speaker, um, to the chair, and of course to all the colleagues that are taking in new jails in their district, because I know this is a, a bold and tough uh, decision that they're going to be making. But closing down Rikers is a bare minimum. So I'm excited that we're voting on this today and that we're guaranteeing that it's going to be shut down before 2026. Thank you, um, Council Member. Just want to recognize that we've been joined by Chair Moya and Council Member Perkins. Uh, next up, I am going to recognize Council Member Richards. Thank you, Chair. And um, it's a very emotional day for several reasons. For those of us who actually know people who've served on Rikers Island, who've been to Rikers Island and spoken to many of the individuals who um, unfortunately are detained there, uh, today we are taking a major step and addressing the new Jim Crow, which is mass incarceration. You know, we get caught up in these words around processes and beds and construction, but this is about rebuilding people's lives who've never had an opportunity to have real rehabilitation. You know, ask Khalif Browda about process. Ask many of those young men and women on the island what they think about process. They're living in a hellhole, And we have an obligation, you know, we know there are people out there who are gonna push back and we don't want to. Listen, this is about ensuring that we can really do something differently for once in New York City. And just because Rikers is closing doesn't mean the work is done. We still have a police department right here in New York City that heavily criminalizes communities. We still have a justice system that unfortunately targets black and brown communities. That's why we are here today. That's why there are jails and that's why they're filled with people who look like me. Um, so I wanted to say ju just on the record, this is much bigger than just about some new buildings and it has to feel different. You know, we can't just slap paint on a new building and call it something different. We all have an obligation to make sure that programming, real programming that's going to ensure that these young people who unfortunately are caught in a system that has kept them there and keeps them coming back because the system is feeding on young black and brown people who look like me. Somebody's getting paid off of that. And we need to make sure that we crush this system seriously. Today is a major step. I just have to underscore that. For people in my community, we want to see Rikers Island closed. Rikers Island, we, ha we have an, a, a chance right here to send a national message, national message, that Rikers Island, the most notorious jail in the country is closing. Do you know how much of an impact that this has? Anybody who sits here and doesn't think that this is going to have an impact on the criminal justice system nationally, and if not internationally, is sorely wrong. And I'm happy to vote for those young men and women who I grew up with, those people from my community who sat in those cells. Even when we visited, we saw people who we knew. And I could tell you, for each and every person I spoke to in there, they talked about the need for more programming, they talked about the need for rehabilitation, and they talked about the need to get out of that hellhole. So I proudly vote in this first step, obviously, to, to close, and I, I hope my colleagues follow. This is about ensuring that our young men and women could have a damn fighting chance at the end of the day. Thank you. Um, would like to recognize Council Member Barron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I agree with my colleague who indicated it's rather challenging to get statements on which we have to vote at the time of the meeting. It, uh, although this is very short and brief and can be read quickly, it really doesn't allow for an opportunity to analyze what the intend, unintended consequences might be. Um, having said that, I agree with the concept that Rikers should be closed. What I look at in the document, which I just got, and look at the whereases as to why they're closing it, it doesn't list those conditions that cause people to say this is an inhumane system. 
But what it does in the whereas is particularly number whereas number three, whereas closing Rikers Island and using only the new borough based jails will strengthen connection to families and communities. And number four, whereas the borough based jails will allow better engagement of incarcerated individuals and attorneys. And whereas number five, whereas the borough based jails will improve inmates' access to natural light, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, whereas the borough based jails will enhance the well being of uniformed and civilian staff, those to me should have been listed as conditions existing at Rikers that needed to be addressed, not saying that borough based jails are now going to be the solution to those things, because many of you may know, I'm not supporting borough-based jails. So whereas the conclusion, which talks about closing Rikers is something that I wholeheartedly support, the infusion of uh, borough-based jails into this resolution makes it somewhat problematic for me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman Byron. I uh, would like to recognize Councilman Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to thank my, my, my colleagues for their thoughtful conversation on this issue and this matter here this morning. And as uh, Councilmember Reynoso said, the time for justice is always now. Um, but let me say this, that, that when we started talking about criminal justice reform, I, and, and, and I, I appreciate folks' commitment and, and, and this fierce sense of urgency that we're experiencing here, um, I don't know how many of us, of my colleagues, have spent time on the other side of the bars, have sons and daughters that have sent, spent times on the other side of the bars, have constituents that every day that we, you know, that it's just a different experience. That being said, what I know is, is closing of Rikers Island when it comes to criminal justice reform is the absolute lowest bar. The absolute lowest bar. What happens in the courts, what happens during sentencing, what happens holistically throughout this system, is, that is criminal. And, and we cannot walk away without addressing those issues. To address this is just, a, is just the lowest bar. When, 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 when I witness an ex-police officer get sentenced to 10 years for the murder of a young black man when the prosecutor asked for 28 years. I see a young man in my community get sentenced to 20 years for a first time offense when the, the, the sentencing guideline says that a predicate felon gets three to 20. Something's absolutely wrong. And we have to address those issues. Unless we are, are, are addressing those issues, we're just wasting our time. So we have to deal with this holistically. Um, this is the lowest bar, but it is a part of really addressing uh, reform to a system. So I, I, I just need to say that and, and ask that um, my colleagues commit to reforming criminal justice holistically and 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 not just say that this is the, the, the end all, because certainly it's not. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Miller. Any other members wish to uh, debate this? No. All right, seeing none, I will now call on a vote to adopt the motion, which was seconded by Councilmember Reynoso. A vote of aye is, in, is, a favor, is a vote in favor of adoption of the motion. Those opposed say no. The council please call the roll on this motion. Preconstitution resolution. Chair Salamanca. Aye. Gibson. Barron. Deutsch. No. King. No. Ku. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Levin. Uh, with particular thanks to Landy's staff that uh, worked very diligently on this resolution, I vote aye. Miller. Reynoso. Uh, with uh, thanks to the advocates as well, I vote aye. Richards. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Gordenchik. Epstein. Adams. 
Moya. Aye. Baron. Noting the uh, comments that I made earlier, um, with hesitation and reluctance and qualifications, I vote aye. And I also think that we needed to have perhaps uh, had some kind of a vision which would say that Rikers Island will in fact not become a land grab for greedy developers. Thank you. My vote will be 11 in the affirmative, two in the negative, and two abstention. Item is adopted. Thank you. Now we will close the roll on that pre-considered resolution. Um, please, uh, we have another vote uh, to move forward on. So today from our land, landmark subcommittee, we'll vote to approve four historic district designations in the Sunset Park neighborhood of Brooklyn, represented by Councilmember Menchaca. LU-496 is in Sunset Park South Historic District. LU-497 is in Sunset Park North Historic District. LU-498 is in South Park 50th Street Historic District, and LU's 499 is the Central Sum Sunset Park 50th Street Historic District. We will also vote to approve LU's 528, the LPC designation of the Bay Ridge Parkway Doctors Row Historic District and Councilmember Barron's uh, Brandon's District in Brooklyn. We will also vote to approve LU's 527, the UDAP designation, project approval, and disposition authorization for 776-780 Myrtle Avenue to facilitate an affordable housing development containing approximately 59 units in Councilmember Carnegie's district in Brooklyn. From our zoning subcommittees, we will vote to approve with modifications LU's 529, an application for Prink Keepus. LLC DBA Lola Taverna. This application requests approval for a revocable consent to operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe, including 24 tables, 48 chairs, to be located at 210 6th Avenue in Manhattan in Speaker Johnson's district. We heard testimony at our zoning subcommittees and received 55 additional emails in favor of a reduced cafe with 16 tables and 32 chairs. Accordingly, for the reasons stated at our, at our zoning subcommittee, we have modified the application to allow the cafe to proceed with those reduced numbers of tables and chairs. We will also vote to approve LU items numbers 534 and 535 for the Leafrack City Parking Garage proposal in Chair, in Chair Moya's district in Queens. The proposal would amend the zoning resolution to revise the findings for certain parking special permits and would also <laughs> approve a special permit for the subject property under the uh, amended text. We will also vote to approve pre-considered items, LU items 540, the 91-05 Beach Channel Drive rezoning proposal for property in Councilmember Overs District in Queens. The proposal would establish C2-3 commercial overlay within an existing R4-1 district to legalize an existing funeral home and its accessory parking lot. We will also vote to approve pre-considered items 541 for the 15-33 Clintonville Street rezoning proposal for property in Councilmember Vallone's District in Queens. The proposal would establish a C1-3 commercial overlay within an existing R3-1 district to legalize an existing commercial use on the property, as well as to facilitate its future redevelopment and modernization. We will also vote to approve pre-considered items 542 for the 112-06 71st Road rezoning proposal for property in Councilmember Kazowitz District in Queens. The proposal would rezone an existing R1-2A district to an R3-2 district and would bring into conformance two separate existing non-conforming use group for medical offices within the rezoning area. We will also vote to approve with modification pre-considered numbers 531, 532, and 533 for the Vernon Boulevard Broadway rezoning proposal in Councilmember Van Bramer's District in Queens. The application is for a zoning map amendment, a zoning text amendment, and a special permit for a large-scale general development, which together will facilitate the construction of three new mixed-use buildings and a total of approximately 17,700 square feet of publicly accessible open area. The proposed zoning text amendment sought to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing utilizing option one and two. Our modifications will be to remove option two and retain option one. We will also vote to approve with modification pre-considered items 538 and 539 for the 38th Street, 35th Avenue rezoning proposal and property in Councilmember Van Bramer's District in Queens. The application is for a zoning map amendment and a zoning tax amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option two. Our modification will be to remove option two and to add option one. We will also vote to approve 
with modification pre-considers 543 and 544 for the Terrace Cardinal Cook proposal for property in Councilmember Ayala's district in Manhattan. The application is for a zoning map amendment to change an existing R7-2 district to an R8 district and an R7-2 slash C1-5 to an R8 slash C1-5, as well as a zoning text amendment to map the site a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option two. Approval will facilitate the rehabilitation of the existing Terrence Cardinal Cook Flower Hill Skilled Nursing Facility and redevelop to include 150 units of supportive housing, 379 units of residential housing, and a PACE medical facility. A modification will be to remove option two and to add option one. Are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? Seeing none, I will now call for a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the local members and the subcommittees to approve LUs 496 through 499, 527, 528, 534, 535, 540, 541, and 542. And to approve the modifications, as I've described, LUs 529, 531, 532, 533, 538, 539, 543, and 544. Would the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, Command land use, all items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. I don't know. Reynoso. I don't know. Gibson. I don't know. Deutsch. I. King. I don't know. Ku. I. Lanceman. I. Levin. I. Miller. I. I'm ready. I'm ready. Barron. Permission to explain my vote. Councilmember Barron to explain her vote. Thank you. Um, it's always difficult when I'm told that, you know, members have really worked diligently and fought hard to, to make sure that they've gotten the best that they can. Uh, but I'm always concerned that we continue to allow projects to come in where we are supporting market rate housing as a part of that. And I've said to my colleagues, we need to go back and fix the rezoning plan that we put together when we first came here. And we really need to fix it before we leave. So I think that having a project where um, more than a majority of the, pro of the apartments are market rate and the others are so-called affordable, which we know can go up to 120 and 130% of the AMI, is not a good thing. So I'm glad it's option one, but I'm voting aye on all with the exception of 530, uh, 531 through 533 and 538 through 539 for those very reasons. Thank you. Richards. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Adams. Aye. Moya. Aye. By vote of 15 in the affirmative, zero the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted with the exceptions of land use items 531, 532, 533, 538, and 539 have been adopted by a vote of 14 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. All right, thank you. I would like to thank members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.